different circuit in the South. You know, <laughs> that you work at and you make about 150 a week and eat pills and drink. And <laughs> it's a bad trip, Pete. And so. Uh, Well, back in the late 60s, early 70s, I worked at a music store downtown, Bid Music Center. Um, and I got to know some of the roadies through there. They would come down to pick up supplies, equipment, uh, especially Twigs Linden. Uh, he and I just hit it off for some reason. Uh, they played for free a lot of Saturdays down at Central City Park. So when I got off work on Saturday, I would go down there. Uh, some Saturdays we'd have a jam session right there in the store. Uh, it was just, it was a fun time to be around Macon. Uh, Macon was not extremely welcoming to the Allman Brothers. Uh, I'm, and I'm talking about the uh, older established, like long hair had not even come to Macon yet. And here these guys come in with their long hair and their odd dress and uh, some people just didn't like it. But then uh, the kids around here were just enamored with them and they were as nice as they could be to everybody. Um, I came up to this house, the big house, twice that I know of. Um, and I went out to the farm once. Um, the shows they did back then, they were trying out material that later became their first albums. Um, plus they would cover a lot of other bands' music as well. It was Southern Rock had never been heard before. And I just fell in love with it and have been ever since. And working here at the big house is like taking a walk through town. Not too long before they put out their first album, uh, they had the material together that they were going to use on that first album. Uh, so they had all the, uh, it was sharp, it was just, it was great. Uh, I, I don't know why I, that one sticks in my mind. I guess it was a spring day, uh, sunshine, not too hot, not too cold. Uh, probably a crowd of a couple of hundred people down there and I knew most of them because I lived in Bibb County since I was five years old. Uh, and it was just one of those afternoons that you never forget. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I followed the brothers throughout all the years, but in 1970 I had gotten married. My daughter was born in 71. And making a living kind of took over. Uh, I was in the music business for about four months uh, before I ran out of money and had to drop out of it. Uh, the next time I was really well, I went to several of their shows here in Macon and went to one at Lakewood in Atlanta. Uh, their reunion, I forgot their official name, but their reunion in 1989, they held, well, they were scheduled for three shows, uh, December 28th, 29th, and 30th, I believe, at the City Auditorium. I was recently divorced, so uh, I went to the Coliseum the night before and camped out with about a hundred other people. And I managed to get first or second row tickets to all three shows, and I bought four. 
Uh, and then when they announced that they were adding a show and they offered the tickets to those ticket holders that already had them, I bought Fourth Night as well. Uh, uh, I went to the first three. I think I took my brother and a friend of his to one. Uh, the lady that later became my, future, my wife, I took her to one of them. Uh, I cannot remember who went to the third one with me. But then the fourth one, I didn't go. There was a young couple that lived in this condominium complex where my uh, fiance's mother lived. They had just gotten married and uh, weren't able to take a honeymoon. So I wound up giving them those four tickets. Uh, so at least they'd have something to remember about their honeymoon. And they were just as pleased as they could be. And ever since then, I followed them. I started working here as a volunteer at the big house about, I don't know, six, eight months ago. Uh, I love being down here. I love meeting the people. Just this morning, there was a couple from Germany came in. And they had planned this as a stop on their vacation. Uh, while we were talking, I asked them if they had tickets for Greg's show tomorrow night. And they said, oh no, so we didn't even know about it. So we didn't get them while well, I talked to Richard and he talked to Rob and they found them two tickets for the show tomorrow night. So they will be there. And uh, you've never seen two happier people than when they left you. But uh, people stop here from all over the world. Uh, uh, the British, they're here a lot. And um, of course we have those foreigners from uh, New Jersey, all up that way too. But, uh, Everybody just loves it, and it's a fun place to be. There's no negatives in here. Uh, it celebrates the music. Uh, so I'll keep working here as long as I let. Well, I was I had composed a set of songs that this gentleman heard and he thought there was recording potential there. Uh, and he put up some funds to cut some demos at uh, they call it James Brown Studio, a guy named Bobby Smith actually ran it. Uh, so with a few friends of mine and some studio musicians uh, we cut those three demos. Within a month after cutting those demos, the place shut down. And I wound up gathering up enough funds to go buy my tapes from them. Uh, and along about the same time, this friend that put the funds, he went bankrupt and said there would be no more money. And uh, I had already found out that the music business is a tough business. And you have to be hard to make it in the business. And I'm not a hard person. I want everybody to get along. Uh, more of a flower child than a radical. So, and plus, like I said, I had a wife and baby in Sydney and one. So I had to go find a big boy job. And uh, I played at weddings and things like that for a few years. But then, even that, I went back to school. And so all that got put out of the way too. And uh, just never got back into it.
So we opened in 2009, and um, before that, in 1994, Kirk West, who was a road manager for the Allman Brothers for many years, he and his wife Kirsten bought the house to turn it into a B&B, um, specifically for Allman Brothers fans. The Macon Zoni laws didn't allow them to turn this into a B&B at the time, so um, they kind of had it as a, a small museum for Allman Brothers fans. Um, until they had the idea with you know several other people to start this museum um, and so we opened in 2009 like I said and we've been open ever since and um, it's been a really great success over the past few years we've just really started to kind of get in the zone and get our name out there to other parts of Georgia and other parts of the country and the world um, but Allman Brothers fans have always known that this is the big house because the band lived here from 70 to 73 um, and so people would come knock on the door when Kirk and Kirsten lived here and say isn't this where the Allman Brothers lived and would let you in and look at all their stuff all their memorabilia and everything so that's kind of how it started um, we've never had no one come in the house on one day so that's good um, we have fans from all over the world, all my brothers do, and so we constantly get people in here from um, all over the United States, but all over the, the globe, really. We had someone in here from Brazil yesterday, I think, and they just came for the Greg Altman concert. So, um, <laughs> but we're usually pretty busy, pretty steady, um, but it comes, it comes even more so when we have a band member here or someone who's related to Allman Brothers. Allman Brothers um, but we have a lot of events here where we're starting to get a lot more rentals in the backyard, um, weddings, parties, corporate events, cool stuff like that, book signings, um, lots of things. So we're, we're becoming more of a presence in middle Georgia um, and especially in the museum community. So we have probably at least 20 people will come in even on a slow day. So it's, it's good. Our parking lot is pretty much always full. <laughs> I get asked a lot if I'm related to the brothers and I have to say um, no I'm definitely not but um, I think it's just because of the blonde hair I think that's probably it but um, let's see we have oh we had one guy who um, I think I already told you this story but we had one guy call the museum and ask us if he could buy something from our archives and we were kind of shocked, taken aback, and we said, well, no, you can't, it's not for sale. Um, and he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting on up there in age, and I, I would really like something autographed by Greg Allman. And I said, well, and he said, well, can I buy it from you, from the archives? And I said, I'm so sorry, but we can't. <laughs> we, we can't give you anything. You're more than welcome to donate things, but we can't give it out. So. <laughs> During the summer, from pretty much June to September, October, we have last Sunday at the Big House. Um, it was formerly known as the Backyard Boogie, but um, we have at least one band, could be local or otherwise, come in in the backyard. Um, usually it's a free show, and that's the last Sunday of every month during the summer. Um, but this past year, we've just started doing inside concerts. So we'll have concerts in the backyard during the summer and during the winter when it's too cold to be outside we'll have concerts downstairs in the living room. Um, and so we've had some pretty pretty good acts um, the past year. We had Randall Bramblett come by who was um, he played with Wet Willie who was you know a um, really influential southern rock band and um, let's see Caroline Aiken who's um, a songwriter from Athens and let's see who else uh, Tommy Talton who was a member of the band Cowboy and he played with the Allman Brothers for several years um, so we we have pretty good people that come by and not everyone is related to the Allman Brothers in a certain way but um, it's all kind of that same genre the same kind of bluesy folk southern rock kind of feel here
Um, and we've had we've had people that have nothing to do with Allman Brothers at all come here and play. And that's fine. We're just trying to branch out and make sure that people know that we're here. Because um, our goal is to get people through the door and to get people, even if they're not Allman Brothers fans, to come in here and just see all the history that goes along with the band and with their type of music. Um, and especially with Macon. So we, we've been trying to reach out to the Macon community and um, show them that we have a lot of history from the the 60s and 70s and 80s on, you know. So um, the Allman Brothers have always been a really big part of Macon, and we're trying to let the community know that. I think my favorite story is there was a man that came in and I was here by myself, it was kind of a slow day, but I was here by myself and he came in and he told me that, oh what was it? Oh he told me that he smoked a joint with Dwayne and Barry just, you know, before a show or after a show or something like that. But it was in 1969, they had no idea who the Long Bros were, they just, you know, saw these hippies walking down the road and said, hey, you know, they look like they want to smoke my weed with me. So they did, and, you know, they became friends after that. And, um, and so we heard from Dwayne and all the guys on the road, and so it was, it was pretty cool to hear that because these guys that I have seen every day for the past year, and they're kind of musical heroes to a lot of people. It's just funny to think that they were just regular guys, you know, just hanging out, playing their music, having a good time, but then these people recognize that and it's, it's pretty cool.